Elephants for Africa is a charity dedicated to the conservation of the African savannah elephant and it started in the Okavango Delta in Botswana um, in 2007 after Dr Kate Evans did her PhD research there and she recognised the need to keep research within Botswana and not just have it leave the country when students um, like her came in and collected their data. So she set up Elephants for Africa with the aim of continuing research and education um, and keeping that information in Botswana. In 2012 we moved from the Delta to the uh, Mahadi Hadi National Park and we've been working there um, since the return of the Pateti River. So the river was dry for around 20 years and then the water came back um, and reflowed in the river and with that it brought a lot of ecological changes and changes in the wildlife population there. One of those things was an influx of male elephants to the area. So now we see predominantly male um, bulls from anywhere up to the oldest bulls right the way down to juveniles and youngsters, um, all in mixed herds along the Bateti River. The reason that we're interested in male elephants in particular um, is because during adolescence they learn an awful lot from the older bulls and we think this is predominantly what's happening in the Mahadi Hadi at the moment. We see big groups of elephants down at the river and foraging away from the river and we're interested in understanding more about the social dynamics of these groups. So how do males come together, how do different ages mix together and what sort of behaviours do they engage in um, when they are together and then how, does this, um, how is this kind of behaviour represented in later life when they grow up. The river is particularly important because it's the interface between the national park boundary on the eastern side and the community lands on the western side. So we think it's really important to understand how males come together there, why they come together in such huge groups down at the river. With large groups of male elephants in the area, it is vital for Elephants for Africa to adhere to a strict documentation process that allows them to keep track of each elephant they come across. So at Elephants for Africa, identifying the individual elephants is a really important part of our research. We've identified well over a thousand individuals and by the time I'm finished we should have maybe 1,250 odd individuals over a three year period. On a regular day we go out into the field for between well at a minimum of four hours and it's been up to ten hours before and so we drive three or four separate routes with slight variations and we aim to drive the transects come across a herd of elephants and start to take photos of all the individuals in the herd. We age all the individuals in the herd, we get a, a rough idea of group size and how confident we are that we've seen all the elephants in that herd and we also get a physical condition score and all of these can be put together to kind of get a, a, a group size and composition of the herd that we found and that creates each individual data point that we have. And so the photos we take uh, we aim to try and pick up the individual features of an elephant that make it unique. And so then we can go take it back and use our, our database to um, identify all of them. And so we look for notches in the elephant's ears, we look for broken tusks, and then sometimes even the wrinkles around the eye and the wrinkles along the front of the trunk. And they can all be used to piece together the kind of fingerprint of an individual and that's what we use to, to then identify it. You put the features in for each one, and then that can then be searched using our search function that we have in our, in our database. While Elephants for Africa is dedicated to the research of male elephants, a strong presence in the surrounding communities is necessary for harmonious living between humans and elephants. So with the, the returning of the river, there's been a, an influx of male elephants, as mentioned. And due to the national park fence maybe not being in the greatest condition, you've got these new male elephants um, walking through the communal lands. And when they do this, they come into contact with farmers' fields, such as this one, and cause a fair amount of damage. So part of the research is to look at how much damage is being um, carried out by these bull elephants. Um, one of the things we really wanted to do throughout the whole project was to get a better biological um, idea of what's going on. Primarily it's normally the older adult bulls that cause crop raiding. We want to also want to look at characteristics of farmers fields and see if there's any um, characteristics that cause them to be prone to crop raiding. So we're looking at where the fields are in relation to the national parks, are they at the river, are they further away and does that influence whether they're raided, but also what's being grown in the fields, so are there certain
crops that elephants prefer to raid. Um, the farmers here grow a whole variety of crops in their fields from maize, millet to watermelons and sweet tree. So if we can find that there's certain crops that maybe the elephants target and the farmers either grow them in a different area or maybe don't grow them at all, does that reduce the chances of being raided? And finally we want to look at um, how the farmers feel about living alongside wildlife. So we ran some questionnaires last year looking at how farmers value uh, elephants and what their tolerance is for elephants. And that was actually proved really positive. So the farmers in this region do value wildlife and elephants, but their tolerance is starting to de decrease. All these um, findings that we get, we're hoping to be able to use them to target the conflict with mitigation strategies in the fields. So there are three main mitigation strategies that have proved successful elsewhere in Africa to deter elephants. Um, the first of these is a chilli pepper fence. Um, this involves uh, using dried chilies and mixing it with car grease. Um, you then soak rags in the car grease and chilli mixture and hang them on a fence. Um, at the same time as doing this you can mix um, the dried chilli with cow dung uh, or elephant dung and burn this. Both the chilli on the rags and the chilli smoke act as a potent irritant to the elephant's eyes and trunk. There was a workshop which was held here in the community mm -hmm. hall um, by the DWNP teaching farmers how to use chilli pepper and the importance of chilli pepper, how can farmers grow chilli pepper. and. Uh, that is when my mind was opened, you know, mm -hmm. and to say, oh, well, uh, how about if I can give a try? Then uh, last year, 2014, that was my first year to use chili pepper. Mm -hmm. Last year, I was only raided once, but by the time I was raided, uh, the crops in the field were too small you know mm. and uh, there wasn't uh, much damage mm -hmm. then but after that uh, I wasn't raided because I was burning this chili mm. pepper um, every evening and night this year I had to buy uh, an extra mm -hmm. uh, 30 gum poles mm. so that uh, I can put for the whole field Working together with nearby communities, Elephants for Africa is able to provide educational tools and other informational resources not only for farmers, but also school-aged children growing up alongside wildlife. So as well as the research inside the National Park, we also have an active community program working with communities um, that are on the boundary between the National Park. And part of our education program is going into the local primary schools and working with the environment clubs there. So most schools out here have um, an environment club where children from the ages of around 7 to 11 can join and they participate in lots of activities to teach them about their local environment, about conservation um, and ecological living. So we're becoming quite active in the environment clubs now and one of the main things that we want to achieve with this is to get as many kids as possible into the National Park. So a lot of children that live in close proximity to the National Park have actually never been inside and normally the only interactions that they have with wild animals are negative ones when they're coming into their communities, into their fields, um, raiding crops or killing livestock. So what else, what would you like to see for Kumaka? Teach the communities of this area uh, how these uh, 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 animals behave mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, they shouldn't see uh, uh, these wild animals as their enemies. Mm -hmm. So we as the community, we must uh, appreciate to be uh, friendly with uh, these wild animals. Mm -hmm. Thank you.